Welcome to another edition of Rational Politics. I'm joined today by Rex Laceby, who is running for the actual position of Boulder County Sheriff. Rex, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nigel. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's talk about the job of a sheriff for a minute, because I don't think many people understand exactly what a sheriff does and all of the responsibilities that fall under that umbrella. So why don't you just give us a, a brief overview of the multitude of things a sheriff actually looks after? Great question, Nigel. I've been asked that several times, and you know, you're absolutely right. A lot of folks don't know, you know what a sheriff does. Um, it's different in a lot of areas, but Boulder County Sheriff, um, emergency management. The Boulder County Sheriff takes care of the jail, has to make sure that the folks in the jail are safe, uh, that the law is being provided, uh, the folks who are in the jail um, are being advocated for, the staff members. Boulder County Sheriff also provides protection for the 20th Judiciary Building on 6th and Canyon. So if you ever walk in there, there's you know, sheriff deputies who are making sure that the, the, the folks, the, the lawyers, the, the district attorney, the you assistant know, district attorney, their staff are safe. Um, there's also a degree of policing that has to happen in the rural areas. Um, so for instance, uh, up in Allen's Park, um, all the way down to Netherlands, uh, Superior has a substation, uh, Lyons, uh, there's different municipalities, you know, little areas, unincorporated Boulder County that don't have their own police. And the sheriff deputies have to be responsible for providing you know, the policing, that law enforcement. Um, uh, the largest uh, aspect of the sheriff's department is that emergency management aspect. And, and as we saw, uh, the great job that Joe Pelle uh, has been doing and did, uh, the, the press uh, asking him questions daily about the Marshall Fire, uh, the flood, uh, the different disasters, and the myriad of other uh, things that can happen to the citizens and guests of Boulder County. The Boulder County Sheriff's Office is, is right there, connected with communications, uh, collaborating with fire, police, uh, state patrol, volunteer organizations, and there has to be a high degree of collaboration that has you know, been going on. I know Joe's been doing a great job of that. Uh, so uh, the Sheriff's Department, very diverse, uh, very dynamic, and uh, I'm looking forward to being your sheriff. That's interesting. I, I, I don't think I actually realized all the different things that a sheriff looks after. Your background, what, what makes you believe that, that you're the man for the job? Well, I think I'm the best candidate for the job, um, not because of my non-existent experience as being a police officer. Uh, the other two gentlemen are lifelong police officers. And I've already been hearing you know, questions, well, how is it you are capable of being a, a sheriff if you are not a police officer. Well, I, I think that the fact I'm not a police officer uh, gives me an, an advantage because I'm looking at this from a, a different lens. We have an increased crime rate. Uh, it's been increasing. We've got so many issues that are coming uh, more pre prevalent. We've got cyber crimes that have been increasing uh, drastically since the onset of COVID and a lot of folks not understanding cyber hygiene. And um, our biggest threat now is wildfires. And you know, Jonah Goose has said it, I've said it on several interviews, um, our wildfire season is year round. And I'm a firefighter. I'm a wildland firefighter. I was on the Cold Springs fire. I was on the Calwood fire. Uh, I was first two days straight on the Marshall fire. Um, I understand fire behavior. Um, my background in the military, um, 21 years in the Marine Corps. I've got a diverse military experience. Um, when I got out of the Marine Corps in 2013, been a member of Boulder Emergency Squad, which falls directly underneath Boulder County Sheriffs. And where I'm a first responder, I'm a public safety diver, swift water rescue technician, uh, I'm the county's ice rescue trainer, I've been on countless calls, searches, dives, fires, working directly with those deputies and Joe and the EOC and State Patrol and fire. Um, I've got a significant background in fire mitigation. I've been the, the lead for Team Rubicon, which is a disaster response organization founded by two Marines back 12 years ago now. Um, we're, we do fire mitigation operations. We help the community. I understand uh, the very delicate balance between, you know, municipalities, fire protection districts, surrounded by national forests, 
how hard it is to collaborate and communicate and try to do mitigating selective thinning of very unhealthy forests to try to prevent massive damage from the next fire. And that takes, I think my background as a firefighter and as a leader uh, all give me you know, tremendous advantage. So, so you, you, from what you've just said, I mean, you, you are already working with a lot of the groups of people that you'd be also working with as sheriff. Oh, definitely. Um, so they all know you. I have many supporters, fire chiefs, deputies. You know, I've been on several calls as a volunteer. So risking my life side by side with my members from Boulder Mercy Squad on calls, dives, swift waters, um, understand how it works. Also from a lens of, hey, I think we could do this a little better because I'm not institutionalized and down this, you know, sometimes, you know, pointy way of thinking. Right, there's one little rabbit hole. But there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that we're doing great. And I'm not gonna come in and just change things around. Uh, I'm going to get you know, where the rubber meets the road. Right. That youngest deputy, uh, one of my correctional uh, officers, you know, deputy or staff member or a nurse at the jail, uh, the folks who are you know, doing traffic, supporting evacuations. Um, hey, you know, what do we? What can we do better? And, and you, you get that. You get that honest feedback by establishing a relationship, by showing them that you actually care about their opinion. And that's something I learned in the Marine Corps. You know, I started as a I enlisted in the Marine Corps right out of high school, and I got my commission on active duty here at the University of Colorado Boulder. And the whole reason I became an officer is because as a you know, scrappy little enlisted guy, little Lance Corporal, I'm like, why are we doing it this way? This is so, this is just so counterproductive. Mm -hmm. And I find myself doing the bare minimum, just counting the days till I eas got got end of active service. But I've had some amazing leaders, some amazing uh, senior enlisted officers, peers, uh, you know, junior Marines that I had under my command, and I wanted to do better. I wanted to, you know, don't just be a armchair quarterback and well, should have done it this way. Well, that's why I'm running for sheriff. I don't want to continue to see the public safety of Boulder County continue to, to slip. And right. we're, we're having this huge issue with fentanyl, and it was meth, and meth's still there and drug addiction and letting our kids get addicted to these drugs that can just kill you with one dose now. Yep. Um, fires, they're coming. The cyber crimes, almost unlooked at. You know, preying on our, you know, predominantly our seniors and some other underrepresented populations. And our district attorney's office, and Michael Doherty is a dear friend of mine, they, their hands are tied behind their back because we're pulling, you know, I've heard that we're actually pulling some detectives from investigating just to have proper coverage. And how can we continue to let Maris Harold and the amazing job she's done here as you know, Boulder Police Chief, you know, they are understaffed, you know, police agencies all across the region, uh, in some areas more predominant than others, their, their officers are getting actively recruited from Texas and Florida. Another thing I'm gonna do as sheriff and why I think I'm the right person for the job is because I'm not a police officer, but my experiences working on boards, nonprofits, working with community foundation, the, the University of Colorado, is we have to join together as you know members of society and change how we how we support and you know convey our gratitude, sometimes non-existent, to our officers. Let me be the the officer, the police officer, love and Democrat that knows that if we do not change that narrative, we'll continue to have less and less men and women. So when you do dial 911, no one's gonna be there. Right. And continually the response times will decrease. And this has to be a collective, collaborative team effort. And I'm, Joe, I'm honored that Joe and Goose and myself are friends. Mm -hmm. um, I've got amazing friends, like John Taylor at the Boulder Chamber and Michael Doherty and Doreen, uh, University of Colorado Police Chief, um, been doing a lot more work with her lately. Um, we've got the best leaders, and we've got amazing city council folks in Longmont, in Boulder, uh, in Louisville, Lafayette, 
and we got these smaller towns that are often you know forgotten the mountain towns right and, and what about their needs i know that we have folks that are you know starting fires and just trying to stay warm you know trespassing mm -hmm. and you know like this whole free camping or the unhoused it's a problem so we can't just ignore that problem we have to make sure that the next Marshall fire doesn't happen. Half of the fires I've been on have become um, more severe because of our year-long you know, fire season and the increased wind that we've been having. So we can't have folks just out starting fires. No. We're, we're, we're quickly becoming closer to California and their, their fires and how wicked those have been. And you know, so many other thousands of folks that, you know, I've heard 30,000 folks affected by the Marshall Fire alone, and it took weeks for us to get the power and electricity back on. Yes. So you know, I'm going to advocate for everyone. You know, this is my county. I love this place. Uh, I've lived in Boulder and Longmont. I lived in Longmont when I was going to University of Colorado Boulder. Um, I work with nonprofits all throughout the county, and I have a deep-rooted sense of you know being a protector. I don't know what it is. I, you know, my mom and dad. Uh, I don't know how. However, I was brought up watching John Wayne movies as a as a young kid, <laughs> uh, watching you know shows like you know Star Wars and right. you know great movies that you had these great protagonists that was just such a great role model. And then you know my, my grandma. You know, my grandma was a sweet little lady that would just try to do the right thing. And I joined the Marine Corps, and I so I was pretty good at it. That's and, good. Uh, I want to be here to protect every citizen. I'm, I'm going to draw that line and we'll make sure that I'm advocating for the taxpayers and our guests. Right. And crime and emergency management could be number one to be served. See, the way I, the way I look at things, um, I, I actually come from industry originally, so I spent my entire working career in the software industry. One thing I discovered about managers and about bosses, they don't have to know everything about what goes on underneath them. What they have to be good at is getting the right people into the right positions, doing the right job. And it sounds to me like that with the diversity of your background, um, you seem to have all those qualifications. Thank you. I, I'm, that's, I'm honored you said that. I have the best boss. His name's Brad Cheatham. Um, he works for a, a, a smaller aerospace company. And I am chief of staff at aerospace company mm -hmm. with my very sexy history degree. Pretty sexy. That's how you become chief of staff at aerospace company. History degree from University of Colorado Boulder. I must remember that. Let me, let me make a note of that. <laughs> but my, my software uh, guys and girls, amazing. Uh, my satellite navigation, my aerospace engineers, uh, the, the ones that can get uh, a rocket that isn't going to launch for a couple of months to hit an object that's not going to be there for several months past that right and put it in the right elevation at the yep. right speed at the right time with a moving planet and sometimes it's you know, 12 minute light minutes away that's right i can never do that but i do know the people that can and problem solving and yep. that's you know portable county sheriff of course or any law enforcement is problem solving elon musk did even better because he launched a rocket and four months later he's able to hit the moon with it. <laughs> oh, Elon. Yeah, Elon, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Elon is a, a competitor, technically. Um, yes. You know, my company's never going to be SpaceX. A lot of my CU students, in fact, we just had a meeting, a signing rocket lab, I love my students. Um, a lot of them go work at SpaceX. Several of them work at SpaceX now. Yeah. We're never going to be SpaceX or Ball. We want to be a, this light, agile company that can do certain yeah. things. But I'm glad we have Elon, because if not, the United States has, will be, have been paying Russia for the last however many years to get. That's you know, right. Or France with the Ariane. Yeah. yeah so I'm glad that American technology, technology is, now back. is helping us get into space. I agree. And it's so imperative. We, yes. You know, a, little, a little earlier in, in our conversation, you actually talked about Team Rubicon. Is it nationwide? Is it local? Tell me a little bit more about Team Rubicon. Your very the formerly known Prince Harry is actually one of our most famous gray shirts. Team Rubicon, a disaster response organization founded 12 years ago after that you know, terrible earthquake in Haiti. 
uh, two Marines, Army doctors, some civilians, some other medics just flew in to the Dominican Republic, crossed the river into Haiti, and that was almost like the crossing of the Rubicon back yes. in Rome. Team Rubicon Disaster Response Organization. It's for veterans and kick beep civilians. Anyone could be a gray shirt. You just go www.teamrubiconusa.org. And I am honored that they asked me to be the city admin, so the lead Ooh. for all of the Boulder area region. And so I've got 600 some gray shirts. We wear gray shirts, call us volunteers. And this is a great way that, you know, someone who just got out of the military or maybe someone whose kids just went off to college and she or he might want to get involved in helping. And we did three weekends straight of fire mitigation up in George uh, Jamestown mm -hmm. this summer. We've been helping with uh, burnt tree removal for the 21 homes that were destroyed by the Calwood fire. We've been up in Glen Haven. We've done, helped 5,000 COVID vaccines for seniors um, with SCL Health, food share. Um, as I was fighting the Marshall Fire, you know, filling water back into my Type 6, getting ready to go do more structure protection at zero dark 30, I'm seeing my chat on my, with my leadership team. I've got the best of volunteer leaders, all volunteers, planning Operation Fire and Ice, which was Team Rubicon, men and women, and a couple dogs going up to staging uh, where Nordstrom's used to be at the Flatirons Crossing Mall and providing food and bringing coffee and just helping those first responders and those folks from XL Energy who were there just trying to get the fire stopped and try to yep. start the very slow year's worth of recovery that's gonna have to happen. I love Team Rubicon. I'm just amazed that I'm sitting here talking to you and it's the first time I've ever heard of Team Rubicon. We're, we're we're, we're, we're growing, about 300,000 folks. Um, that huge earthquake that happened in Nepal. Yes. Um, Prince Harry was in Afghanistan at the time, heard about it. You know, he's the prince, whatever he did, he's like, hey, you know, mom, I got some stuff to do, you got me, whatever. <laughs> um, tasked some helicopters, filled them full of medical supplies and water, flew in, and I'm assuming, you know, the prince, I've never met him, uh, one of my gray shirts who's in Denver did meet him, so he was great. He sees all these Americans running around. Like, hey, who are you guys? Like, hey, Prince, how are you doing? Hey, we're and they're moving, you know, debris and you know, and it was pretty much a recovery effort, right? Uh, and then trying to save some villages and redivert some water. And they made him sign up. Right, he joined. Said, hey, how can I help? And so, like, they made him sign a waiver. Perfect. Gave him a gray shirt. So you can Google Prince Harry Team Rubicon, and there, you know, is the Prince. They're logging, moving logs, right. filling sandbags, talking to kids. You, you need to talk to his grandma and get the uh, official seal of approval. Uh, I'll do that now. <laughs> let me, let me, after I'm sheriff, then maybe I'll have the prince over. There you go. All right. There you go. Yeah, he's a great guy. We, sh we should probably think about wrapping this up now, but is, is there anything that you would like to say over and above what we've talked about, about why you should become sheriff? Well, the other guys are great, and I met uh, I met one of them uh, at an event I was doing with Jonah Goose. Um, Jonah Goose, one of our hugest supporters of you know firefighters, mm -hmm. um, gave him some information, helping him write. You know, it was mostly the, the real like the, the the experts in fire, but we brought together as much information as we could on what he could convey to Congress to support fires. Uh, firefighters more and advocate for different procedures and ways that we can actually be more successful uh, in fire mitigation. And so I met, you know, uh, one of the, the guys there and the other one I was just uh, online with the Longmont area Democrats and they both seem like great guys but they've been lifelong police officers. We want transparency. We want very positive change to make sure that the, you know, the Boulder County feels safe, that we've got you know, respectable, disciplined uh, men and women who are wearing the badge who've got that arrest authority. If someone's having an issue with a senior officer, I don't know him. I'm going to come right. in here as a fresh start and make sure that I'm looking at this with the most, you know, justice-seeking lens. Yeah, oh, totally open-minded. Totally open-minded. I'm going to get everyone's opinion. I'm going to find out what we need to change. I'm going to support right. them. I learned that in the Marines. 
I'm three classes for my Master's of Emergency Management Homeland Security. I have been focusing on cybersecurity and building a resilient community. And the classes I've been taking have been great. I took this on my own to get more knowledge in how can I better support my community. Right. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm a warrior. Um, I'm not at war now, but I'm going to be at war with uh, criminal activity. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to support um, our police and give them as much mutual aid and backup I'm a first responder now. I, I've done the diving. In fact, we just did an ice dive Saturday. It's always uh, fun when your glove breaks and your yeah. hands freeze and you're like, oh, uh oh. Yeah, but, um, and uh, I, I've been in charge of, you know, twice as many folks in yes. the sheriff's office in an area eight times larger in combat. Right. And yeah. understanding the rules of engagement there. And the lens I was well, you on. understand the organization, so, how to how to organize things, and how to get communications working correctly. And I've got amazing friends. Um, collaborative uh, effort is something I know we need to do. And I'm a community builder. Uh, I'm going to make sure that we're doing better communicating, advocating for our officers, making mental health a, a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to you know get more. This will be a, a plug for Boulder County Sheriff's Office. We need more victim advocates. Right. The, the Marshall Fire is going to cause years and years of painful recovery, and a lot of the folks are dealing with insurance, and yes. the process is so slow, <coughs> so people are getting stressed out. So we need more folks to help folks. Right. This has been an absolutely fascinating conversation talking to uh, Rex Laceby here, who is running for Boulder County Sheriff. Thank you very much for watching this show on Rational Politics. I'm your host, Nigel Abe, signing off. Thank you kindly. Goodbye.